This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. I'd like to uh, introduce now Charles Wright, who will be uh, moderating uh, much of the meeting and uh, helping out parents and so forth here and in this part of the program. So, Charles? Good evening to everyone here we have today and making a journey. Hopefully, it'll be a process one to reunite you with your family. Uh, tonight, do we have the attorneys in the office at all? Not here. Okay. I'd like to introduce the first family, Mr. Dan and Brenda Blue. Could you step to the mic, please? My name is uh, Daniel Blue, Jr., and I'm here with my wife, Brenda, and we're from Macomb County. We um, came into this business because our family, we have five grown children, and all our children are um, out of the house. Our baby is in the Army, and he went to our, um, um, Afghanistan three times, and we decided to foster. We came into this looking to make a difference in kids' lives. We realize that we are not per perfect. No one is. However, we have no problem getting an allegation. But it's when you take the allegations and you take them and you turn them around and you misscrew everything and you take my good name and you abuse it. I came into this business with an open mind, and I came into this business to do right by God's children, not the state of Michigan's children. They are God's children. And I came into this business to do what is right. And all I got is my name. And at the end of the day, I want to keep it. Now, moving forward, this is what happened. We got an allegation. We, we fostered, and then we decided to adopt. We adopt two kids, a boy and a girl. Our 16-year-old, a 15-year-old at the time, went and made an allegation on our home uh, saying that her, my husband, she told me my husband was looking at her. And I said, looking at you? Looking at you how? You know, and so when I caught her in three lives, she got very agitated. She ran off. She ran down the street. She got with a 30-year-old girl. They took her to the police station nine hours later. When she got to the police station, CPS came in, took my two boys out of the house, one that I was fostering, one that I, that I had already adopted. When they took the boys out of the house and stuff, uh, we went before uh, a panel and um, we had like a TDM hearing. We left there and we turned around and we went to um, the judge and they said it should be cleared up in 10 days because they knew that my daughter was lying however they took what she said and said well we know she's lying and everything and then they turned around and said oh we have a condom and we have a sex toy and it was used in the incident this was in their allegation I said oh goody now you can test it you can catch her in a lie and you can give us back our life. Well, now, oh no, the condom conveniently, oh, it, she loaned her purse out. She loaned it out to one of her friends and we think that it belonged to her. Okay, but you got my husband 
name and you're saying, oh, my husband had sex with her, my husband was trying to penetrate her, my husband was doing this, my husband was doing that, but yet you didn't take my daughter to the hospital. 18 days later, when I suggested, did you do a rape kit on her? Did you do anything on her? Because she had a condom and a, and a sex toy. So we know since she had a condom and a sex toy and it didn't belong to him, who did it belong to? My daughter must have been raped. Or uh, something went on or she had sex with somebody, so you need to test all of that. They never test it. They never bother to do anything with it and everything. And then you have uh, the police saying, well, at this point, it's he say, she say. Then you turn around and you, and you say, well, we're going to drop the case. You don't give us no pol police report. Six months later, you decide to give it to us. And it's got so much crap on it. It's just awful. And then you have CPS abusing their power, saying to us, we're going to go ahead on and put you on neglect and abuse charges. For what? We haven't done anything. Well, can you go ahead on and plead to no contest? No, we sure cannot. Then you have them taking us through nine months, $17,500 and counting. Yes, I love my kids, and yes, I want my kids, and yes, you're not going to get them. And I, didn't, I may not have given birth to them, but I want them. So it's just a clear-cut abuse of power. And I'm telling you right now, when you start oppressing people and taking people kids, this is out of control. This whole system is out of control. And you have to deal with us. You have to deal with the little people. That's what I'm calling us, the little people. You have to deal with us. You can't make that fed those federal dollars until you deal with us. Well, thank you, baby. Okay. What I'd like to mention here in closing, uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, uh, yesterday, my wife and I were raising our own kids. Today, because of the niceness and the good heart that we have, people threw some mess in here at us. So you know what? I'm a military man. I will improvise, adapt, and overcome the obstacles that beseech me because we are a strong family. We're one. Today, we're going to let you know the things that need to change because tomorrow, our children are depending on our victory. Thank you. Next on the list will be Dana Davis. Please step forward. Good evening. My name is Dana Davis. I reside in Wayne County. Um, my children, I have three children. They were taken away from me on knowingly false allegations. Um, I have um, allegations that were against my son saying that he had sex sexual intercourse with my two daughters. My daughter was then three years old, and 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 the, you know when I was going through it, um, the children had to get tested, and they told me that the children would, would be returned back to me once they were tested. They were tested; everything was false and negative. And then it turns that the person who actually told my daughter to say these things, you know, was an aunt, and she took my daughter to the police station, had her tell the police this, and. Um, she was just telling her to say all type of stuff. And then in the end, it turns out that this aunt messed with her. So my son, you know, they had to get tested. And it's, it's just a big mess. I, I still don't even know where to begin. It's just so much. And it's like I've been to the police. I've tried to get the aunt arrested. And they're saying that I'm coaching her to say these things about the aunt. And that is not true. I wouldn't do that. But CPS, my children were tested within a month. They were taken away in September uh, with October, they was, the testing was done. They still didn't return my children. And when I got my own attorney, that's the only time they talked about sending my children back home. So when I got the attorney, um, the attorney for CPS decided that they wasn't going to go on the evidence, that they were just going to go on testimony. And the case was dismissed after eight, eight months of pain and suffering. And I still like, I feel like my family has not gotten its justice because the person who actually molested my daughter is getting off because she ran to CPS with her story first. So CPS or whoever, they need to check into that also about people making false accusations and allegations and what's the reason that they're doing it. You know, because my daughter was molested, but she just wasn't molested by my son. So she's telling her to say all type of stuff, like say you saw white stuff. 
he get tested, he's not even able to ejaculate. So, and I asked them, what was the purpose of me going to trial? And they said to remove my parental rights. For what? I've done nothing. My son's done nothing. And I have, I have papers right now to say that I failed to protect my daughter still from my son. And that's not true. So I'm just saying something needs to be done. I have papers and I'm willing to share. Something needs to be done. Evidence is sitting on these papers. And two people to me should be getting arrested for, that's considered a felony, I do believe. False reports for sexual um, harassment. So closing, something needs to be done. Next on the list. Teresa, please step forward. Hi, my, hi, my name is Teresa Goin. Can y'all hear me? I don't think it's up high. I don't think this is on. Okay, I, well, I'm gonna speak anyway. My name is Teresa Goin, and I, I am from the uh, Oakland County area, and I have five children, and all of them were taken away. Um, my oldest son was taken away in 2001, and my other children were taken away in 2005. I have been um, I falsely accused myself, and um, I'm very devastated. I have anxiety. I've been suffering um, from a little bit of depression, sleeping problems. Um, I just met my I just met with my oldest son Saturday. And he's 16 and he wants to get out of the system. You know, he wants to come back home to me. And um, my, my, and um, this, I don't think protective services, I'm trying to do the right thing to get a, a psychological testing, but it seems like I'm being, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure this word out. I'm being like railroaded. Like my son is in another county and I'm in another county and it's two workers that's involved and um, I don't think they're on the same page. I don't think it's fair because I wanna do what's right for the time that I miss with my oldest son as well as my other children. Um, I pray to God to, to um, help me get a fair trial but I couldn't get it. Um, they look at your race, your disability, um, how you've been poor. I have evidence. I brought my stack um, of my case and everything. Um, all I want us, all I want is my children back. I am so desperate to get my children home and I want a relationship with them because I can't touch them. I can't tell them that I love them and I miss them. And it's just sad that um, how the system has, the, the CPS has um, broken families. Thank you. Mary, please come to the mic. Tammy, please come to the mic then. Good evening, gentlemen. I'll thank you myself for coming to listen to our stories. I'm from, my name is Tammy Watson. I'm from Macomb County. Um, I've had basically a long ongoing problem with an ex-husband that doesn't want to file taxes in our state and not pay child support who owes 80000 He's a very vindictive man. He's continually called CPS on me throughout the years um, and reported me um, and the allegations were investigated in Gratiot and Gladwin counties and found to be uh, no evidence and unsubstantiated. The kind of allegations was that I whipped my children with a horse whip or bull whip until they bled, that I spanked them till they bled, that I've made them stand at the wall for 16 hours holding books. These were investigated. However, in 2009, I moved to Macomb County. These children never had a mark on them. There's no medical report. My children were on honor roll in school. I raised them. I hunt, I fish, I cook, I clean. I teach them to say yes sir and no ma'am. However, in Macomb County, these workers want to disregard the investigations of the other workers in previous counties and say these things are now true. 
My children who have never had a scratch, a cut, something broken. I have the guardian at litem in court at hearings multiple times saying, this is the worst case of abuse she's ever seen and she's been doing this 20 years. Excuse me? My children have not missed school long enough to stand at the walls for 16 hours holding books. Two days after that, I rationalized and I said, crap, fire, that's like I'd have to get them up at 6 a.m. in the morning and stand there till 10 p.m. at night when I have six children to raise, three from my ex-husband. What my experience has been with the court is that these workers um, go under the guise of clear and convincing evidence in civil court because these things, if they were true, would be prosecuted in criminal court and I should be in jail. But they're not. They have immunity. All they need to do is form their own opinion or have some sort of bias or prejudice against you, a personal vendetta, and, and that's all it takes. My children now, my three teens that are rebellious and living with their father, are getting F's in schools, have eight missing, up to eight missing classes, one card marking. Recently, my son that just turned 15 in March was over at 12 in Van Dyke with a friend of his that he met at school now, trying to steal a bike out of the parking lot of a plaza. A caller called in and responded to seeing two young men doing this, and they fled to the roof of a fashion bug. Nine officers responded to get them down. They were trying to pick up a motorcycle and carrying it off. They're now punching holes in doors at Dad's house and posting them on Facebook. My 12-year-old daughter has been allowed to have Facebook and MySpace for years, but at Mom's, your mom's invading your privacy. That's at my job as a mom, is to look into that stuff. I do locker checks at school. They do not care about the credibility. This really blew up in December 2009 when I was pregnant with my youngest. And my 15-year-old well, he, 15 -year -old had assaulted me when I was pregnant and punched my current husband in the face. Before the detective wanted to press domestic violence charges against him, they said that he needed to be evaluated. Dad rolled in on his white horse saying that mom was unfairly institutionalizing him for an evaluation. The day I came home from the hospital, he assaulted me again. They placed him to live with dad because I was the victim. That August, well, let me back up, that June, he was at dad's house and got a knife and went after his younger sister. That August, he assaulted me again and yet again was arrested. And what dad say? The poor child has been abused. My 16-year-old's excuse for not having whip marks that was whipped till he bled was that he heals fast. There's no pictures, there's no medical reports, none of my neighbors, every neighbor I've lived next to my entire life, I've not just become neighbors with, they've become an extended part of the family. We interact with our children, we're outside all the time. I have a gazillion pictures of my children, summer, winter, fall, whatever. Swimming shorts, everything else, there's no marks on these kids. Not one time did my ex-husband call CPS when the children were in his care and said, hey, come over and look at my kids, I think they're being abused. Not one time did he take a picture or take him to a doctor to have this documented. Yet, because of the war with my ex-husband and him owing $18,000, a week after he got the children through CPS, the judge dismissed the felony against him for non-payment of child support. He immediately filed a motion to terminate or to get permanent custody of our children, the three teens, to terminate his child support order and initiate child support on me. He wasn't very happy when the referee in that case informed him that if the mother has to pay child support, it'll come off of the, the arrears. Um, so at this point, my involvement with CPS and the foster care specialist, I've been proactive. It didn't bother me to go through classes. I'm educated. I went to parenting classes through CARE, an organization from Macomb County. Every parent that was in there was from or through CPS DHS. However, when I get to court, they tell me that that class is insufficient and not good enough. They never mentioned it while I was going through the classes, knowing that I had to get verification I was enrolled and attending. I went one step further. I went to the 16th Annual Macomb County Parenting Conference, which was an all-day seminar. I've even enrolled in counseling. I've done them. I get failed. I pass the 10 panel hair follicle test. Okay, let's cut right here and make sure as far as you know, saying your goodbye. Okay. okay go ahead. And I only got a partial compliance on that. My issue is, is they can come into court and they can say whatever they want 
have their own opinion and their own attitude against you if they don't like you, and the word's gold and we do not get to speak. I said, excuse me, I'd like to talk to my, consult with my attorney. The referee said, no, we're moving on. I mean, there's no proof, no allegation of these allegations. Yes, I disciplined my kids. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to run, let them run the streets and be disrespectful to adults and authorities. So right now, the biggest problem is, is my family was a cash cow, so to speak, if that's the politically correct term. Six children that were removed and placed in placement, that's a lot of money for the state. And it's not, okay. okay. All right, thank you for listening. Okay, next coming to the microphone, Mr. Kr Mr. Krantz, please. My name is David Kranz. Uh, I currently reside in Allegan County. Uh, five minutes is, uh, I feel, not long enough to describe uh, my point of view with Child Protective Services. Uh, I'm 22 right now, and I've had 18 years of experience with Child Protective Services. Uh, 1992 is when I first was introduced to them, but 1994 is the first time I can remember them. 1994, my dad was accused of uh, sexually abusing my sister. After uh, psychological examinations on everyone in the house, including my sister and I, they found that she was diagnosed as a victim of Munchausen's factitious by proxy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that disorder or not, but what it is is somebody will inflict a situation and have that expressed through the person they want it to be generally for attention. Uh, Mid-1994, me and my sister were removed for a year and a half and placed in Ionia County um, for foster care, uh, in which we were told by the caseworkers if we would say what they wanted us to, then we would be able to go home. Uh, throughout that time period, we've also heard my sister and I that my dad was going to receive the electric chair and burn in hell. Uh, all which I do have documented in this binder from court records. In 95, after that year and a half investigation, we were allowed to return home, as well as Protective Services signing a letter removing my dad from the central registry because of their error. In 2000, uh, CPS again came into my life and my family's life here in Kent County and there was an anonymous call that we were being starved and abused. After a year investigation, they found that not only were these false, that it was another error on their part, and CPS left us alone. In 2003, again in Kent County, Child Protective Services came to yet again knock on our door. There were more accusations again that my dad had supposedly sexually molested more family members. This was investigated for six months by the police department and later thrown out because it didn't happen. And the CPS case continued on for three years, uh, which is when I had actually moved to Allegan County. In that three years, the caseworker, Deb Deal, for Child Protective Services, admits, and I have the DVD of this, of her testifying on the stand, that she did not follow protocol in order to get the story she wanted for her case. On the stand, she also did admit that she had coached my brother to say things had happened in order to form her case. Also on that same DVD, I have a psychologist issued by Child Protective Services that testifies that they believe that people are guilty if CPS are the ones that sent them to them. Recently, in 2009, yet again, Child Protective Services has knocked at our door. Since I am over 18, nothing that directly affects me, I thought, until they were removed from the house in 2010, and as a brother, I am not allowed to see them because I support my dad in yet another allegation. My brother, two weeks ago, tried to kill himself. Over a year ago, he was diagnosed as depressed and suicidal. When we requested a psychological evaluation in the courtroom, suddenly they were no longer depressed or suicidal, according to the CPS-appointed caseworker. Yet here we are, 
two weeks ago, my brother trying to kill himself and still no psychological evaluation. The reason I'm not allowed to see them is because I support my dad. I went to visit my brother in the hospital after he took 50 Zoloft and had puked all the way to the hospital. I got to see him for two hours and then was told I cannot return for the visits. Before he attempted suicide, I was allowed to see him one time a week for one hour at the DHS office and that was the only time I've been allowed to see my brother and sister. I hope that you guys will please consider looking into not just the abuse of Child Protective Services, but what they're doing to families. I don't have any kids taken away from me, but I was the kid that was taken away. And now I'm the one who has been taken away from his family and restricted from seeing his family because of his opinion. I ask that you guys please just look into this and consider the other alternatives. Maybe not everyone is guilty that goes before Child Protective Services. Thank you guys for your time.